Hello and welcome to the video. This is a first look at two brand new models from Atom RC. They're not even listed on places like Banggood and stuff yet, so I have no idea how much they cost. But I thought it would be useful to kind of unbox them and have a look, particularly as we're in that lull between Christmas Day and New Year. And it'll be fun to have a look at two new things that potentially could be builds or planes for when the weather gets a little bit better. Now, Atom RC is very quickly becoming one of my uh, favourite makers of fixed wing. In no small part because the Atom RC Dolphin is one of my top three fixed wings from the whole of 2021. The Atom RC Dolphin is just a fantastic flyer and I'm so pleased to those people who got in touch and said you need to try one out, they're amazing. They were absolutely right. They also did the Killer Whale, which is the big twin, which is a beautiful, stable uh, lovely kind of explorer class. You can get some massive batteries in there and it'll fly for ages. And they also did the seal, which is a super huge kind of Skywalker, Bixler style, uh, that again is very, very efficient and very floaty and lovely to fly. When I get the opportunity to speak to a manufacturer, designer or vendor of fixed wings, I always push them for more models in this particular class of kind of the 650 to 800 millimeters. Because for lots of pilots, these are perfect for larger park flying or like me, just keeping around in the back of the car for those days when you go somewhere and it's a beautiful day and you want to have a buzz about. And I'm very pleased that Atom RC have not only brought out one, but two different versions. We have the Flying Fish and the Mobular FPV Wing that we'll have a look at in a minute. Now, Sonic Model has had a huge success with the AR Wing Pro that they came out with, oh wow, over a year ago now. So there's definitely a demand for good, well-designed FPV wings at a decent price point. So let's hope these are at a decent price. So let's get them out and have a look. And in particular, let's see whether or not they thought about not only analog but digital FPV, whether or not it's lithium ion and LiPo or just LiPo only, and have they left enough room for a flight controller and other electronics for those of us who like things like iNav and Arduplane. So the first one we'll have a look at is the Atom RC Flying Fish FPV Glider. It's interesting they're calling it a glider because it looks like they've actually made this to be something that you can power to altitude and then just cut the engines and soar about, which is a flying style that I really enjoy, particularly on a nice calm day. Wingspan of this thing is 650 millimeters. The length is 570 millimeters. The wing area, which is nice to giving that, that's handy for calculating things, is 6.15 dm squared. It's made of EPP. Uh, the two motors on the wings that we'll look at in a moment are 1105 5000 kV, and the ESC is a 10 amp 2 to 4s ESC. Propellers are 3 inch by 1.8 inch, and as you can see here, this already has the FPV gear installed. You can buy it in different ways looking at the end of the box. It did actually have different options and I seem to have managed to get my hands on the PMP kind of FPV version. So this is kind of ready to go. A little camera in the nose. The hatch is held in place at the front. A bit of balsa and a very strong magnet. We have the cables coming in here and then we have the two servos running to the horizontal and vertical stabilizer for the uh, rudder and the elevator now interestingly it's going through this little guide hopefully they've glued that on well otherwise that's going to pop off as soon as it gets hot but it's kind of nicely put together pretty traditional layout obviously holding the tail in place with a single bolt and um yeah carbon fiber reinforcement only foam hinges but that's pretty okay at this kind of size now let's have a look what else we've got in here. So this looks like the horizontal stabilizer with the elevator on it. Again, carbon reinforced, um, nice and flexible actually. Got the little control rod and everything in there. Um, nicely finished, that's, uh, that's great. That's, I'm guessing just gonna slide into here, is that that way around? Yep. Oh, okay, good. Nice fit, nice tolerances. Uh, that control rod is just going to have to go through the back. The other black bit then, oh, it's another canopy. So, as well as the flat canopy, there is this raised canopy that you could use for something. Now, does that just fit in the same way? 
Yeah, it kind of does. I'm wondering if you could maybe squeeze on a little pan and tilt thing on that. Uh, let me just show you some Im images of the battery bay, just to give you an idea of the dimensions. I know I'll get asked. It's not a very big battery bay. We're not going to get lithium ion in here. So next thing in the box is the wings. Wow. Okay. All the electronics are already pre-installed in here as well. Fantastic. So that then means that this should be a relatively quick and easy thing to put together. So I'm going to have to open the bag all the way. Get it over all the control rods and everything else. Lots and lots of packing in here, keeping everything very safe. So we have a blank for the camera at the front and uh, another piece of foam. And then we have 4.3 gram digital servos in the wings going into a central board. XT30 power connection. Looks like there's also the power connection on here that's going to run the camera. I think that goes up to the VTX on the other side. Uh, we have a cable that plugs into that. On the other side here, this whole piece actually removes. And then underneath is the uh, FPV transmitter. Now, the little mode there, the little motors, the 1105 5000 kV units, and um, this little board here is quite interesting. This has the ESCs on it, and there's a little cable uh, we'll find in a minute that looks like it plugs into there for the connections for your throttle and all your other controls. Um, little bag of bits, aha, okay, here are all the screws. Uh, to hold everything in place and there's the little cable that obviously goes into that board that plugs into your receiver for your throttle elevator etc and then those are the props nicely they have a spare set incredibly small props for this so this is definitely more of a floaty model looking at the size and uh, recommends a 3s 750 milliamp power lipo on this so it's definitely not built to go like stink. It's going to be a fantastic floaty explorer uh, for kind of nice long flights. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, how it all goes. Looks like the VTX doesn't have a 25 milliwatt setting. Be careful of that. So to put it together, you just slide in the horizontal stabilizer. That's held in with a long screw. Uh, mine just is long enough here. They could do with having that screw an extra three, four millimeters longer. And then you just put the wings on the top, take off the little cover that goes over the VTX, and that gives you access to two holes that you put the other screws through. So here it is all together. So a Foxeer camera in the nose. There's obviously a blank here if you don't want the camera there, if you want to use one of the other canopies. Um, the top again, as I just showed, does come off and you have access there for all the other pieces. I would probably use a dab of hot glue or something to keep that canopy in place once I've got the VTX set up, or maybe add a couple of magnets. Uh, that is going to get blown off and lost if we're not careful. And you can see how beautifully it's gone together. The way the foam is finished and the way it all goes together is really simple and straightforward. It'll take you all of five minutes to put this together. So the next one we'll have a look at is the Atom RC Mobula FPV Delta Wing. Uh, this is, again, classed as a 650mm wingspan, 300mm front to back, 8dm uh, squared wing area, made of EPP. Motor is a 2004-2700kV motor. 30 amp ESC is included in here. Uh, 4 by 23 inch prop. And uh, it's also got two 9-gram servos. Now, I don't think this is put together in quite the same way as the other one. You're going to need a 4S 850 milliamp hour LiPo to run this. So let's take all these pieces out and have a quick look again and quickly put it together. So our first bag looks like the vertical stabilizers. So a nice black unit, very reminiscent of kind of Z08D stuff. Uh, we have this that has the blanks for the GPS, the camera, depending on what you want, and also blanks for the vertical stabilizers if you don't want to fit them. I like the fact um, that they actually have molded in. You need to cut these um, kind of nose things off the bottom for it to fit. They've molded in these little slots for your antennas. What a really cute idea. So lots more packing. Next bit then is the wings themselves. Uh, yeah, this one, these don't have the servos fitted, I can see that already. 
So we have nicely finished foam, um, space for the 9 gram servo, CG marks, yep, foam hinges, pretty standard stuff. Looks like all the linkages are at the top. Nothing fancy for the connectors, so it looks like it's going to be one of those things that you need to kind of put on and glue into place. But there is room for carbon fiber reinforcement, and there is carbon fiber running down the uh, elevons as well. So it's definitely a little bit more building with this. I can already see that's going to be the case. The main body itself, here's the main event, looks kind of funky. Okay, no magnets on the hatch. That was a friction fit. And we have our electronics in here. We have our two 9 gram servos that will need to be installed out in the wing. We have uh, three, four props. Well done. That's loads of props to have a go at. Here's the supplied little motor. Beautiful little thing. And then we have push rods with balls, which is fab load of screws and then we have the ESC including uh, some cabling so that you can get it into the uh, into the body and even an XT30 connector really cute now there's lots of room in this and um, mine's got a little bit damaged in the box unfortunately but you can see it's kind of made of two pieces of foam that have been stuck together I'm guessing that's going to all the voids. I like the fact there's nice, easy handholds here for launching. That's obviously the camera bit at the front, where the pieces on this sprue would go in. Blowing the camera out a little bit. Hopefully you can see what I'm showing here. And then we have the huge battery base space for a GPS. Hooray! GPS cover. Fantastic. So there's definitely thought about putting a flight controller here. Uh, ESC pod at the bottom. Motor at the back. Yeah, this... Kind of makes a lot of sense. Huge vent for cooling. A uh, little bit deeper battery bay. Again, let me show you the battery bay here with the dimensions on it so you can see how big it is. Uh, not tremendously deep. So again, something like a 4S lithium ion pack isn't going to fit inside here. This looks like it's definitely made for lithium polymer. Again, the recommended battery on this would be 4S850. So not huge. Last couple of things in the box. Uh, this is the VTX, which looks like the same unit that was just on the other model. A bag of balsa bits for all the pieces, motor mounts, the balsa. So you're definitely going to have to warm up the hot glue gun or uh, use your foam safe glue to get everything in. Carbon spar, single one that goes through the body. Always worthwhile installing this before you do electronics. And then we have a battery strap and the camera. Let me just take this out and have a closer look. This is a Foxier camera. So again, you could put whatever you want in it. In terms of the building, well, there's a little bit more involved with this. Uh, the way mine has come is with all of the electronic pieces separate. So this is going to be a fun evening putting it all together. But let's just kind of push the foam and just see what the gaps and the, uh, the tolerances are like. Okay, that's pretty good. That's uh, that's grabbing on nicely. And also, when we've got the wings on, we can actually see what the thing looks like when it's all together. Okay, that's quite a pleasing shape. That's nice. Um, I would call it a flying wing rather than a delta. Let's put the vertical stabs on. I'll have to cut them off using an exacto. these kind of pieces. I keep these pieces of foam. They'll come in handy for repairs and other things. And then these vertical stabilizers just kind of push into place. I'll probably run a little bit of hot glue just in there just to make sure that they don't pop out in a landing. Again, there's no magnets or anything holding them in place. Now that might be a very conscious choice. There aren't any magnets in the kit, but you don't want lots of magnets around the area where you're gonna put your GPS in case it has a compass and you want to use that. I don't tend to for iNav. So there it is all together. And actually it, makes an awful lot of sense it looks really nice the camera is on the lower half of the wing which is a little bit interesting I suppose that's easier if you have to fly with a slightly nose up attitude you can still get the camera looking out straight forward without catching stuff I just love all the little thoughts that have gone into this 
I really like the idea that they've actually put a guide for your antennas actually in the vertical stabilizers. And then you've got all these other pieces. We have the GPS at the back. We have space for the ESC. We've got all the channels cut for the servo pieces. Um, there's an awful lot of wood in here. I will do some follow-up videos. We'll actually build this thing out and take it for a flight. Uh, but this is the ESC cover. So you've got a piece that glues in and then a piece that screws in over the top of the top of the ESC, which seems to be the way that Atom RC will do it. It works brilliantly on my Dolphin. And then you've got the space at the back for the motor mount. But it looks like the wings aren't made to be removable as such. Um, I'm probably going to build both of these without a flight controller initially and then add one later. There's an awful lot more scope in this modular wing to add a flight controller than there is with something like the flying fish there's not a lot of room in the flying fish so maybe you could get away with something like a co-pilot or similar maybe um, but this is a really cute compact wing again not masses of thought about something like lithium ion batteries or dgi hd so in summary, from my unboxing and my first look at this stuff here, uh, both seem to show a good attention to detail and some good thought. The fit and finish feels better than the other larger Atom RC models. Some of those, I don't know whether it was just something that happened in shipping, but some of them ended up with gaps between panels, and these go together beautifully. Interesting they're using smaller props, so may not be designed as speed machines. Uh, the... Flying Fish definitely isn't. Uh, it's going to be interesting to get the modular wing up because with that motor and prop on a 4S battery, it might still be a nimble little machine. Unfortunately, I've looked at the instructions and the CGs marked and those kind of cool things, recommended battery, but there isn't any detail on the throws necessary for the control surfaces. Come on, Atom RC, you can do better than that. When you make these things, put the throws in the manual to give us a fighting chance. When I do my maiden videos, I'll publish all my throws and kind of trimmed offset positions when I do that. So let me talk about the flying fish. I love the idea of a compact, quiet, easy to transport FPV twin. I love the idea of an unobstructed camera view because the props are out of the way. I like the idea that they've included a separate canopy for something else. Maybe a lightweight pan and tilt would fit there and that would be a really good, fun way to get into head trackers. Interesting idea to have the ESCs and all that stuff on one board centrally in the wing. That means that it's nice and compact but that does mean that if that board goes you know hopefully there's going to be spares around for that it is very simple to build and you can put it together inside five minutes and that does include brewing your cup of tea the tail screw on mine could have been a little bit longer three four millimeters longer would have been fantastic feels like a bigger brother to something like the zohd drift so if you're a fan of the drift or you've been thinking about one but you want something that's a little bit bigger without the tail then this is an option. There's also some other twins coming out from other vendors at the moment too, so this definitely seems to be what lots of vendors are interested in making right now. Again, this one needs a 3S battery, 750 milliamp hour LiPo, no room in here for lithium polymer, and no room in here, unfortunately, for DJI HD system. You could probably make it fit by cutting foam around, but naturally there kind of isn't a spot. You might be able to use that second canopy to mount your air unit to keep it in airflow, but you're going to have to work at it. In terms of the modular, I think this is a lovely size of FP wing for keeping around. This, for me, is one that, if it works as well as I hope, it'll go into the regular fleet. Like I said at the beginning, I've been trying to get some of the vendors to make these compact FPV wings, so I'm really pleased that Atom RC has taken up the challenge. Again, not masses of room in here for the digital HD system. Uh, there is enough room in here for things like a flight controller. It's going to be interesting to see how it all goes together to get the central gravity in the right spot. Like the optional vertical stabilizers, love the fact they've put in a GPS mount in here, so they've really thought about what one electronics go in. There is more work needed for the mounting of the electronics, but it's going to be a fun evening of soldering and gluing. So if you like that kind of stuff, this would be a fantastic one to keep you busy a couple of evenings when the wind is howling outside and the rain's coming down at 45 degrees. Looks nice too. I mean, looks are a very personal thing, but I think it's quite a nice looking wing. And again, you're going to need a 4S 850 milliamp hour LiPo to fly it. 
So there we are, first look at these two models. Sadly, not a lot of thought about the DJI HD system and not enough room for the 18650 packs of a decent size. The proof of the pudding will be in the flying of both of these. And with the smaller motors and props, I don't think they're going to be 100 mile an hour monsters. I expect that the wing could be nice and lively and fun to fly, but I think that the flying fish is designed as an FPV floater and soarer. I'm guessing that's why they're calling it a glider in some of the documentation. Looking at the specs, I think the Flying Fish is going to be a smooth, quiet, efficient cruiser for relaxing FPV, and I think the wing's going to be a little bit more of a hooligan machine, but probably not in the 120 mile an hour range, but still a lot of fun. Both would be fantastic for flying in a large area and even a large park. Well done to Atom RC, thumbs up quickly becoming one of my go-to vendors for fixed wing innovation at a decent price. So I've got my fingers crossed that when we see the prices for these, they don't go crazy. Stay tuned for the maidens. Just need that weather, a spotter and some spare time to all line up. Thank you for spending your time today watching that video. You can find me in all the usual places on social media. And if you're trying to learn about a subject, then check out the playlist. All of my videos are organized into easy to follow playlists that if you're trying to learn a topic, will take you from the basics right the way through to some pretty advanced stuff.